Good morning and welcome to the sixth day of Police Technology Experience 2020. Our focus for today is video analysis, reduction, redaction, surveillance, and storage. I'm David Griffith, editor of Police Magazine, and I will be your moderator. I urge you to ask questions using our interface, and we will try to address them at the end of this keynote. Before we get started, here is a message from one of our sponsors. Thank you, David, and I'd like to extend a thank you to all of our sponsors for their support and participation in bringing police technology experience to you all. We invite everyone to join today's Innovative Solution Roundtable Showcase session that will begin at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific, and you'll be entered to win an amazing prize package in the Feshheimer Brothers Company Giveaway. Today's prize is a Flying Cross Quarter Zip Justice Sweater, a Vertex Spine Gray Delta Stretch 2.0 Pant, and VaporCore Crew Socks. Today's winner will be announced via email by early next week. Thanks, David, and I'll turn it back to you all. Thank you, Pamela. Our first event today is titled, How Public Safety Organizations Are Actively Addressing the Changing Need for Transparency. Our speaker is John Gassick, head of Veritone's Government, Legal, and Compliance Business. John, take it away. Thanks, David. Uh, <clears throat> good morning to everyone. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to get in front of you and talk about uh, what's going on in your space. Um, as David mentioned, uh, I run the government legal and compliance uh, business for Veritone. We are a uh, artificial intelligence company who's taken a, uh, we think, a unique approach to helping uh, police and government agencies solve problems with AI. Uh, what I like to say is we are going to work with you and partner to cognitively enable uh, existing or new workflows uh, to make it more efficient to, to do your job and so you can focus your resources on uh, your primary mission of, of public safety. Um, we have a, a, we're a public company. Uh, we focus on three markets, uh, media and entertainment, uh, energy, and government legal compliance. Uh, I'll probably make a few uh, references uh, to things that we do just to give you context, uh, but I will, will definitely focus on uh, the this, this issue of transparency and, in my terms, cognitively enabling those workflows. Uh, specifically to um, government legal compliance, uh, we are a cloud-based solution. Uh, we run in Azure Gov. We run in AWS Gov. We also uh, are in, deployed up in Canada uh, in Azure. Uh, we are FedRAMP authorized. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily relevant to this group, but I think it's important just to understand the, the breadth of what we do. Uh, we are sponsored by the DOJ, uh, and specifically we work with the U.S. Attorney's Office today uh, to provide cognitive services to their investigations. Uh, Think of lots of unstructured data, audio and video. They use our platform to call down and identify relevant information. Uh, in addition to uh, an uh, application such as that, uh, we have built uh, three applications very specific to law enforcement uh, to be able to help, as I said, cognitively enable a process today <clears throat> that takes a lot of human interaction or it isn't even possible. Um, those products are listed here on the screen. I'm going to show you some, some screenshots of those, uh, but they're called Veritone Illuminate, a Veritone Redact, and Veritone Identify. I'm going to go through them just real briefly so there's some context uh, and be able to pull reference back to them as I, as I walk through this. Uh, Veritone Illuminate, uh, we use multiple cognitive models, uh, facial recognition, transcription, translation, geolocation, but it's used to cull down a mass amount of unstructured data. It can be used uh, in an investigation. It could be used as simple as uh, transcribing interview room recordings or jailhouse calls. Uh, we'll suck in uh, celebrite information, CCTV footage. An example would be you've got 
you know, several hundred to thousands of hours of CCTV footage. You have several suspects that you're looking for in that footage. Uh, we can very quickly uh, go through that with an AI model and identify the specific locations in that footage where you're looking, that suspect appears, uh, and then your investigators can focus in on that information. Uh, it's, it's a very powerful tool in terms of, of culling. Uh, and one of the challenges uh, that we're going to talk about in this world of transparency is you know, how do you identify and find all the information uh, that you need to and want to uh, share with the public. Uh, the second product is Veritone Redact. Um, it's fairly straightforward and simple um, what we do. We've uh, cognitively enabled the redaction process for audio and video. So this could be uh, body cam footage. Uh, it could be uh, drone footage, it could be footage that comes from a, a citizen. Uh, we do both, as I mentioned, both audio and video. And what we do is we've used AI to make this process much more efficient, somewhere to a fifth or a tenth the time to uh, redact an hour of video. Uh, really, really simple, great interface. Uh, we're going to focus on this quite a bit because it's, it's a key part of this transparency workflow. Uh, Veritone Identify is the third product. Uh, this is a product that we, we uh, have put together to take uh, evidence in a case that's video-based uh, where you don't know who the individual is uh, and you're trying to make a match to somebody to investigate. Uh, we take the, the video, we run AI on it, and then we use your no known offender database or others uh, to match up possible suspects. Um, it's used to speed up uh, investigations. One of the things that's very unique at, uh, and one of our big customers is Anaheim PD, uh, it is very good at taking sketches and comparing those against uh, photographs. Uh, it's, it's a unique AI model, and it has been proven to uh, really speed up investigations. And then the last um, product that I'll just mention is uh, Veritone AI work for relativity. Um, this is a, uh, really a workflow where we use AI, as I mentioned uh, earlier, to cull down a lot of data and then bulk export that into a review platform. In this case, it could be relativity, uh, but it could be others, open text or case point or Xtero, uh, even one, some that are built uh, homegrown. It's a very good way to leverage human um, processes today and turn them into AI processes uh, to leverage technology to make those much more efficient. Um, we're, we're a fairly new company, uh, young company. Um, I'm pleased to say we've won a, a number of awards. Uh, we really thought about this process differently and we're really focused on in public safety, you know, the mission of, you know, keeping the public safe and focusing your, your scarce resources uh, where you need them. All right, so let's jump into uh, kind of what we're talking about in more detail. Um, this concept of transparency. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of pressures across organizations for transparency, whether they're uh, based upon you know, laws that have been passed, uh, public requests for FOIA information. Uh, in some cases, our, our customers are just trying to be proactive with their public constituents. Uh, they, they want to be uh, proactive and be transparent about what's going on inside of their, their city or their county. Uh, there's also just a mass amount of data. Uh, one of the things that we find when we're talking to agencies uh, is a, a lot of these workflows and a lot of these processes start with on-premise or silos of data. Um, there's a real um, management task to identify and pull the data together. Uh, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about some innovative ways to use the cloud and AI to make those to make that more feasible. Uh, one thing to think about, and you'll hear me reference this a lot, um, the more data that you have, the more value you're going to get with an AI process. And, and so the example I like to use for this, and it's not a public safety example, and, uh, but I think it, it hits home and people understand it. Um, in our M&E, practice, one of our high-profile customers is the San Francisco Giants Baseball Club. And what they've done is they've taken all of their game broadcasts for their 61-year history, and they've run it through our system. 
And what that allows them to do is to take that massive archive and find these key moments in their history based upon some marketing program or some sponsorship that they want to do or some fan experience. So an example would be uh, they can search for Willie Mays making a diving catch uh, with the Coca-Cola logo uh, somewhere on the screen uh, versus the Dodgers. And our system will pull up every instance in their 61-year history where that happened. Now, someone asked John, why is that relevant to this space? Well, think about what that what that is. No human was going to go through and watch 61 years of regular season and playoff baseball games, transcribe all of that metadata, and make it searchable. And what AI and what Veritone makes possible is doing just that. So think think about in your entity or your organization the disparate places where you have data, where it's, it could be inside of a evidence.com or it could be in siloed storage, could be in your RMS, uh, it comes in from your body cams. Think about all that disparate data and being able to organize it and cognitively enable it so you can find it similar to the giants. The other thing that this allows you to do is it also allows you to link up with other agencies. So I, I'm based here in Orange County. Uh, I mentioned Anaheim PD. Uh, I know the Anaheim PD RMS system is different than the Irvine PD RMS system. Um, we have the ability to connect to both of those, pull that data up into the cloud, and make it searchable and shareable across those boundaries. So whether you're you know, a county sheriff or a, a local PD chief, uh, by using these types of tools, you have the ability to access and search each other's data uh, if, if, you're, if you're willing to share it. Um, across borders. Uh, again, no human or you, none of your officers is going to be able to go through all that data. And so that's what the, what the AI concept is all about. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about budgets. Um, you know, all the agencies are under pressure from, you know, COVID and tax receipts and this, this, this budget exercise. Um, so that's one pressure. The next pressure is the need to want to keep your citizens safe and want to you know get information out to the public and, and then another element that we'll talk about is any of you who have you know are adding body cam programs or expanding body cam programs or adding drone programs there's a, a lot more data being pulled into the system that needs to be reviewed either as part of a case management system or as a FOIA request on the other end all of that yields uh, the need to look at things, you know, differently and use new techniques and new processes. And, and we, we believe, and we've been very successful working with partners and agencies, that AI can really help, help in this space. Um, so just, a, just a, a couple of things to think about again. Uh, I know this is a across the U.S. Uh, for, format. Uh, every state is different. Uh, there's definitely a push for uh, more and more transparency. Um, some of it is, you know, based upon legislation. As I mentioned, I'm here in California. Uh, there's there's been several um, bills or laws passed that I've listed here across the top. But but the key to it all is that more and more of the the video and audio data uh, that you're using to uh, make arrests and identify suspects then has to be released to the public. Um, in addition to that, with COVID, uh, there's a, a shift to people having to work at home. <clears throat> um, you know, just different, and again, an opportunity for all of us. Um, and we we really believe that. <clears throat> excuse me. We really believe that implementing a platform-like approach and connecting as many of these uh, systems that you have today is the right way to do that. Uh, one of the things that we found is that that we at Veritone with our with our platform can uh, enhance what you're doing today. These aren't forklift, up, forklift upgrade type things. Uh, we can plug into most any application uh, or workflow and cognitively and enable it and create a lot of efficiency for you. Uh, I'm gonna show you a few stats here uh, in a second, just in terms of things that we've seen and one of our partners. 
but there there's no doubt that there's there's multiple pressures here budget budget pressure more content pressure the need to want to deploy these technologies and then the need to want to share and you know utilize as much of this information to be as effective and efficient as possible uh, so i mentioned california um, again this isn't relevant to everybody but but out here uh, you could you can read this there's basically uh, 45 days between um, an event and it has a use of force um, and the, the deadline to um, get that information out to the public. Now, as I mentioned, um, we have customers across the country. Uh, many agencies are not waiting for laws to be enacted. They, they just want to get information out to make that connection with the public. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you some examples of that in a minute. But uh, as we all know, 2020 has been a very, very unique uh, and interesting year. Uh, here's a couple statistics. Uh, we are partnered with a company by the name of GovQA. Uh, they are a FOIA front end for, for your citizens to come into, make requests, and then a uh, back end to connect into your various systems. And we have an integration with them to make that more efficient. <clears throat> Uh, we did a web webinar with uh, GovQA last last month. Uh, Microsoft was included in that as well, and these were two of the statistics that came out of that. That um, since March they've had an increase uh, of 57% uh, in the number of fulfilled re records requests. Um, for us, going the other way, we've had over a 400% increase in the number of hours that were needed to be redacted uh, of video or audio or both. So again, we think we're, we, we're kind of at a precipice here of uh, these different pressures, budgetary, more data, the need to be transparent, new technologies, and, and really think we're just getting started. Uh, so a couple statistics, some of you probably are already living this, so I, I apologize if it's redundant, but for, for some of the groups that are looking at body cam programs or thinking about this issue, uh, Basically, if you take data across the, the nation, there's roughly 18,000 agencies. About half of the agencies in the country have body cam programs in place. Um, there are grant programs out there. Uh, there is a belief that with the, the change in administration uh, that will happen in January, there will be further grant programs um, to be able to fund uh, body cam uh, programs across the U.S. Uh, as I mentioned there's 70 million uh, awarded in grant programs over this time period. But the, the interesting stat for those of you that don't have it or even those that do have programs in place, um, for every 75 cameras it, today it causes one additional uh, position inside the police department. to apply the uh, the production software as part of that grant uh, and have it paid for. So there's, there's, there's definitely money out there. So um, if you step back and, and look at it from, uh, you know, kind of a bit, you know, how, how do you securely and efficiently uh, redact video and audio and text materials? Uh, what is the right way to manage, track, and deliver records um, across your organization or your agency? And then, of course, how do you stay compliant both with CGIS but also local record regulations? What we found is um, a lot of the processes are very manual. Um, some agencies will use YouTube channels uh, to display things publicly. Uh, there's a lot of human time spent um, both within agency or outside of agency, uh, which is expensive, uh, to redact these videos that folks are trying to make transparent. So for each of those uh, chiefs on the phone, 
listening to this, you know, one question I would ask is, you know, what is your budget for redaction? Uh, how are you doing it? Are you using your own personnel? Are you farming it out? Um, we, we had an agency that we ran into, a big agency, but they had a, a redaction budget last year of uh, $25 million. Uh, almost all used um, to fund human redaction uh, for their FOIA and their public records requests. Um, again, we feel like when we heard that, here's a place where AI can really automate a process, uh, make it much more efficient, and, and save the agency a significant amount of money that can be spent, again, on the primary mission of, of keeping citizens safe. Um, so, I mentioned this already. Um, this is a this is a visual. Uh, basically, if you think about my my San Francisco Giants example, think about your agency looking across. You know, how do you manage audio, video, and text evidence? <clears throat> and we <clears throat> we call this unstructured data, um, and we have an ability to use you know transcription, translation. Uh, object detection, facial recognition, all of it from our same platform with the press of a button and, and do exactly what I described uh, for the Giants to be able to find suspects, to provide transcriptions, to take uh, jailhouse calls in different languages, translate them, make them searchable, to really make this, this process of calling data down and finding everything much more efficient and effective. Um, we use Illuminate, Illuminate to do this. Um, this has been a, an interesting ex experience for us. <clears throat> we actually built this product originally uh, for some new laws in the UK. And we were working with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is going on, agencies uh, over in the UK. And you know what we found was there was a real need to help investigators or DAs or public defenders go through this mass amount of data. <clears throat> and so this product allows all of those agencies potentially even to use the same data. And, and, the, and the reason we did this is these laws required uh, cooperation and uh, sharing of, of data across the, the public defender and the DA. And, and so what we did is we built a product where you can put all that data in the middle, and then you can use our tools to search and find the evidence that's, that's relevant to you. And as I mentioned, much of this is unstructured. It can be in different languages, um, but no way a human was gonna be able to go through it all efficiently or effectively or comprehensively. And, and so this product allows you to do that. <clears throat> and what we do with an agency is, uh, you know, we would sit down with your staff uh, understand what systems you have today and very quickly be able to connect to them, even if they're on-premise, pull that data up into our CGIS compliant cloud, uh, and which is, is Azure or AWS, and make it searchable and shareable. And again, I mentioned this earlier, but I want to repeat it here. This is audio, video, documents, Celebrite information from a cell phone, whatever evidence you have or, or gathered, having that all in one spot. But another way to think about it is, what is all the data you have uh, inside of your organization already? Um, how do you have it indexed? How are you sharing it? When somebody makes a FOIA request, what's that process? This product can be the backbone to help find that and elevate it up so it can be uh, presented to the public, reviewed, presented to the public, and if necessary, redact, redacted. Um, what this slide shows is, is a, a workflow that we, as I mentioned, we're partnered with GovQA. Um, what we're finding is once you put a body cam program in place, uh, your need for some sort of platform and system to manage uh, public information requests or transparency releases or, you know, releases that you have to do by law, you're going to want to have a system in place to do that. And so, um, again, this is another depiction of what I'm talking about. 
think about a system that is easily automated so that when those requests come in, it's much simpler to identify the data, uh, get that data redacted, uh, keep track of where you are in the, in the timeline in the system, and then get that data out to the public. Uh, it's, uh, I, I'm kind of repeating, repeating the, the message, but coming at it from the other direction. And we've seen just significant, significant savings in costs uh, by putting these systems in. GovQA is also a cloud-based solution, so you don't have to do a forklift upgrade. It's something that you can add net new and connect it to your existing systems, uh, just again, to make it much more efficient and effective to manage this, this need for transparency and, and the, the process and the work necessary to get that kind of data out. So I'm gonna show you a screenshot now. Um, this is uh, the visual of our uh, redaction software. Uh, we're, we're happy to do a, a demo if anybody is interested. We usually take about 30 minutes to, to do that. Uh, this is a very simple product. It's cloud-based. Uh, our customers go through a one hour uh, training session after they've purchased it. Uh, and they can begin using it immediately. Uh, but what the system does very simply is it uses AI to uh, identify heads, which is the green box. Uh, it identifies uh, MDT screens, uh, orange box. It, <clears throat> it identifies license plates, uh, the blue box. And then it has the ability with the yellow box for the, the reviewer to draw uh, a bounding box around a particular object, and the system will automatically track that uh, object throughout the video forward and backward. And so the goal here is to reduce time. Um, as you can see over on the right-hand side, uh, we can reduce uh, a, the time um, significantly. The stat we use is if it, a one-hour video generally takes five to 10 hours, of human time to redact it. Uh, if you use the Veritone software, they can get it done in less than an hour. Um, we are open. We work with you know all body cam vendors. Um, so if you have a, a mixed a mixed program uh, between car cam, body cam, drone cam, CCTV, CCTV footage, uh, regardless of the the, the manufacturer, uh, all that data can be ingested inside of Veritone. Um, if you look over on the right-hand side of the screen, what, ha what basically happens is the AI goes through, it identifies all of the items that I mentioned, the heads, the MDTs, the license plates, and any bounding boxes you draw. And then the reviewer simply goes through and checks and unchecks uh, whether or not you want to redact that particular item. Um, the models aren't 100%, but they're pr quite good, actually. Uh, and so we have a number of tools built in to make it very simple to adjust and review and, and automate that process. Um, again, the goal here, similar to the Giants example, was to identify a problem uh, and use AI to cognitively enable that, that very human workflow and make it much more efficient. For audio, uh, which can also be very tedious, uh, we use uh, transcription to provide a transcript of the audio, and we use our tools to search and identify PII or other relevant um, items that, that you want to redact. And again, very, very simple as compared to the traditional approach of going through frame by frame and listening to the audio live. So huge time saver using technology, uh, cloud-based, uh, very simple. The other thing that I'll mention on this is a little bit of a commercial is because this is cloud-based, uh, when we make an improvement to the software, it gets, uh, it gets disseminated immediately. So all of our customers benefit. Um, we do uh, improvements every couple weeks. Uh, we also have been getting you know, requests from different, from different end users. Um, some of the things that I just mentioned uh, have been requested by some of our customers, and we, we can deploy it very quickly and make it available. Um, we, we sell this product based upon the, the number of hours redacted. Uh, I call them t-shirt sizes. We've got a set of 
kids t-shirts, you know, teens t-shirts and adult t-shirts, and then these packages based upon how many hours uh, your agency is doing uh, of redaction. And the more that, the bigger that is, the, you know, the, the more efficient we make that process. Um, this is a really slick product. As again, it's completely open. Uh, it is kind of the foundation of this presentation today, um, but it's it's really just a part of an overall workflow um, that we think will continue to evolve uh, as uh, more and more agencies have more data and are trying to do more with it. Um, so this is the chief I mentioned. Um, chief Giantis has been a great supporter of ours. Um, he, he serves as a reference. He's retired now, um, but he if, if I need him to, he's happy to talk to any of our potential customers. I've done a number of webinars with him, but you know he didn't have a a, a a law reason to put this out here. He he wanted to become more transparent, and uh, he did a lot of research uh, before he found us. As I mentioned, he used a grant to pay for us. And the day that uh, the chief and I did our webinar, uh, the day before he told a fun story, they had it was right at the beginning of COVID. And they had to go into a hospital to uh, speak with a suspect. And uh, one of the, or I guess everybody's body cam, picked up a lot of information inside of the, the hospital. And they hadn't really thought about that when they bought the body cams. And so it was a very uh, potentially tedious um, redaction that they would have had to do. And so one of the first ones that they did, uh, you know, was in fact, trying to redact out all this HIPAA information that they'd picked up on chalkboards and files and things of, of customers. And they were very successful in using our software uh, to do that. So uh, Chief Jantis, again, took a different approach, um, but the end result was the same. He's really focused on being more transparent, using technology to make it more efficient, and focusing his team on, back on their main mission of keeping the public safe and uh, you know, doing it in an efficient way. So next, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, play a video uh, for everybody. Um, I'm going to cue that up. This is another one of our customers talking about uh, their use case. I am the administrative manager at the Lake Stevens Police Department. The citizens request and they demand more transparency from agencies, which rightfully so, we're a public entity. And so my role in that is to make sure that my staff and the department have the tools and the equipment they need to effectively handle all of those requests coming at them. We wanted a software that was CGIS compliant. We needed one that offered facial recognition, speaker sound separation, and ultimately we were looking for a software that would add value to our department. I truly felt after just seeing the demo that I could log in and utilize this system, even if I received no additional training. It does so much of the work for you that, that we're, we're getting in there and we're just using our skills to fine tune things to bring a software solution that has AI technology really has been instrumental in our agency. I feel many agencies are in our boat. We all deal with, with many different types of data coming at us in all different types, whether it be from officers or citizens coming in. And so moving into the future, I think it's gonna be important not just for my agency, but for all agencies to have a solution and a, a place where we can store this data, how we can process this data, in a timely fashion. It doesn't just stop at the doors of Lake Stevens. Criminals don't just stay in one city or the next. They go between cities and they'll do things in one city and then come over here and do them here. And so to be able to share that data and have that data at our fingertips has been really instrumental in helping to fight crime and ultimately you know, find solutions for our citizens. Utilizing Veritone products and the AI technologies that, are, that come with that have saved time within our department of processing different types of file formats. And by doing so, we're able to do different things within our community or that will benefit our community instead of focusing those on processing those audio and video files. We're able to do other things that add value to our department, to our community, and furthering the mission of our agency. AI technologies definitely help our city become a safer place. With our searches, with our, with our transcriptions, with our audio video redactions, all of those. 
it's actually lowered our overall costs, our budget. We're saving money to the bottom line by using these new technologies. I don't feel like just a customer, I feel like part of the team, and that's what we found with the Veritone product. So just uh, on the slide, um, I just want to summarize what we talked about today. Um, what we've tried to focus on here is cognitively enabling processes that you have. And uh, our goal is to make them very easy to use. When we set out and, and built these products, we understand that these are, are complex problems, but we wanted the interface to be very simple. And as I mentioned, that Redact software product, you know, we can have your team members up and running in a, after a 30-minute training session, so, so very simple. Um, to do that, we leverage uh, the cloud. Um, as I mentioned, we're in AWS and in uh, Azure. Uh, both GovCloud, so, you know, from a security perspective, we rely on, the, you know, their, their CGIS compliance. Uh, the data is very secure. But what, what, by using those technologies, though, it allows you to not have to do forklift upgrades. You can enhance and enable technologies that you have and use the cloud to do so. And then finally, you know, the goal is to stay in compliance both with your own policies, any state laws that you have, uh, but take advantage of technology to create, you know, this, this transparency uh, goal, whether it's because it's something that's important to you or it's required, you know, by laws in your state. Uh, we really feel like uh, this is an evolving space. Lots of new pressures that have occurred in 2020. Um, it's a great time to rethink, you know, how you're doing things. And we're finding an opportunity to, for huge savings um, for agencies who are taking AI, taking the cloud, and thinking about re-engineering their processes in a, in a very simple way. Um, so uh, with that, um, those are my prepared remarks. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you, John. We have had David. some questions come in. Uh, what are some of the things law enforcement agencies should consider before implementing AI-based applications like Veritone? into their existing workflows? Um, you know, I, what I like to talk about is, you know, what is, what is the goal? I think you need to um, identify, you know, what is the goal, what you're trying to do. And candidly, uh, getting some education on what is possible is also probably worthwhile. Um, one of the things I find is when I sit down with chiefs is we'll come in and we'll show one of these these products and we we talk about what we're capable of and then uh, almost every time uh, it turns into what i call the harry potter part of the discussion where the chief will say well that's really cool could i also do this um, and the answer generally is yes um, but i think we have the most success around you know being very specific about what problem we're trying to solve whether it's to improve an investigation uh, whether it's to you know take costs out of the system for redaction, whether it's to supplement a body cam program, um, you know, be very, very specific about what the goal is and then be open-minded uh, around how AI can help that because uh, AI is a, is kind of an amorphous thing as well. And, and getting some education on what that really means, I think is, is really helpful. Okay. Uh, how affordable are these types of software applications? Um, so, uh, I think they're really affordable, and, and the thing that I always um, challenge the chiefs and the agencies on is think about the total cost of a solution, not just the absolute cost. So, for example, let's take the redaction software. Um, we are aware of some firms that charge $50 a minute of video to do redaction. So, uh, an hour long, an hour long video would cost three grand. Um, we charge a hundred bucks an hour, uh, for the software at, for one hour. Um, but as you buy more and more, uh, we, we continue to discount that. So we have, uh, solutions that range, uh, packages that range from a couple thousand dollars up to several hundred thousand dollars, depending on how much video you have. Um, for some of the large agencies, 
Uh, we have unlimited packages uh, based upon the number of individuals using redaction. So what we found is people can save a lot of money uh, when they think about it from a total solution perspective and get their, especially when they're using humans, take those dollars and spend them elsewhere. Um, so we generally don't have too many, too many people go, wow, that's expensive because of the amount of money they can save. Great. Um, you mentioned that uh, Veritone's applications are on Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. What if the client's data is on premise? Yeah. So uh, what happens is uh, the the data that whether it's uh, any of the solutions we will up we upload that into the cloud whatever the relevant data is. So if it's a, a video, uh, you know it's very simple to just click on the video or the audio file and upload it to the cloud. It then gets uh, ingested into your your instance of our software. Um, you can have you know different logins for different people, um, but we, we move that up in the cloud. We don't charge for storage. Um, you know, you can leave that data data up there. Uh, very simple, drag and drop. Um, if you're a GovQA customer, uh, we actually, there's a, uh, a button inside of GovQA that automatically sends it to Veritone um, if you're trying to, to do something more efficient. Uh, but it's, it's quite simple to, to upload it. Um, and that that's my example of not having to to uh, change your on-prem process. The other thing that we do uh, for agencies is we also if there's a lot of data, uh, we will automate that process for you. So, for instance, for our identify application, uh, every night uh, the system will automatically update the database for any new arrests that you've made and process that day so that uh, that information is available in the morning. That system is all on premise. Uh, the solution is for Veritone's up in the cloud. Okay. What's the onboarding, onboarding process for implementing these Veritone applications into an agency? And does it cost X dollars per user, or is it an unlimited user license agreement? Um, so let's take Redact. Redact generally is a 30 minute training. Uh, we can have you up and running in, in a day. So, if David, you are an agency and uh, you signed the license today. We could have you up and running tomorrow. It's very, very simple. Uh, we have a customer success organization that will uh, train train whoever the users are. And you know, if you add new users later, we're happy to, to train them. Um, if if it's the uh, identify or illuminate application, same thing. Uh, we can have you up and running, you know, in 24 hours, and you can start start using the system. In terms of redaction, uh, we have both. Uh, we charge uh, by the hour, and we did generally do annual packages that are as small as a couple hours a month, up to you know, thousands of hours a month. And then when you get to that level, <clears throat> we also have an unlimited package uh, based on users. So we'll structure it however fits your particular use case or needs. Okay. Uh, we have a question from the audience, but we kind of need some clarification here. If, if you are the audience member who asked this, please uh, give us some uh, um, uh, some uh, um, clarification. Go ahead. I think uh, I know. I, I think I know. I'm happy to get more clarification. Um, I'm, I'm going to turn it into a, a, a. It says, "Can you only pull data from those that join?" Basically, the way our system works is we do not use public data or we're not scraping anything. So we're not, uh, there are some competitors in the facial recognition space who uh, have a bigger database. What we do is we only use uh, your known offender database or data that you, you load in or your uh, sister agencies uh, load in. So there's no um, data coming from the outside. We've done that intentionally. Um, we think it really helps with getting it funding approved with, you know, different views on city councils. Um, and we find that our particular use case is very, very efficient um, by not having it have some of the issues that come with using, uh, you know, publicly, publicly scraped or publicly found uh, data. Okay. 
Well, I think that's about all the time we have uh, for this session. Um, I want to thank you, John. We, uh, that was great. Our uh, case study panel discussion sponsored by Veritone, Avigilon, and Utility will begin at 1.10 p.m. Eastern. An on-demand version of this keynote will appear on policetechnologyexchange.com backslash experience. Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Thanks for having us.